girls, boys, well, I welcome you to the main spaces of Neurowage. And today we have such an interesting story, because the layout will be faithful, because on the senior positions, on the senior positions, well on the senior positions in the sense of the senior arcana, yes, I will see what energies you are in, and, in fact, I will see what can help you. maybe higher power. Because it is believed that if we interact with the Elder Arcana, we interact with the higher powers directly it is a spoiler, for example, in dwelling. Living through the Elder Arcana is much simpler and easier to understand. Well, to newbies, maybe not, of course. Well, it's a lot easier to see why. Because it's like Arcady is pushing out on his own. Well, the meditations there, by the way, are quite simple and straightforward. It's like, yeah, the younger ones are a little more complicated. But I always treat you with piety, probably even respect, when I realize you've been through everything. They even, you know, talk to you differently, on a different level. But it actually costs a lot to, well, conditionally, to talk to me on the level that those who have lived, it turns out, older and younger than Arcana, because it feels like a different language, a different understanding, yes, a different feeling, yes, because the first dragon killed, everything, you know, and then it's like a fog, and then it's like a fog. What's up? Let's watch. But before I do, I want to say that if you still want to get into the manifest, you can still jump in the last carriage of the train, because the task is not difficult yet. Then it will become more complicated, of course, the whole story, but, again, I still recommend that you live through the older arcana first, at least. Even now. You'll be looking at the layout, you'll at least familiarize yourself with my interpretations as I see it. I hope that our layout will not turn into a lecture piece with you, which I will rewrite right in front of you. I mean on the older arcana, because it's clear that more information has come out, and you're more engaged and enthusiastic and yourself out there with your insights regarding the older arcana. So, ah. Uh, you just have to make sure it's primarily a layout. And I probably need an additional deck to show me exactly how to play through from the arc. Alright, let's do it. And now we are all temporarily in the energies of the magician. Because the distribution had of a neurowitch. Neurowitches. Yes. It's simple to define right now. Or arcana, because three options. I don't know what. And let's see, actually, how it manifests itself. Maybe we can take some clues. Well, gentlemen of the residing, the life hack is probably understood and known. That is, if now we realize that we have some resonance of one of the arcana, then we have already dived in there, further into meditation, and have simply maximized the resources and possibilities of this arcana, because now you will see a hint, a highlighting. Where to get the resource conventionally. How do you realize what's happening to you? I ask, in fact, higher powers, may I not fail a toxic hierophant, because I could certainly talk about this for a very long time. And the first stones we have are quail leg, and the second one is yellow, and kind of the third one is green and black. Or something. In the info box, the start time of your video. In the info box, the start time of your video you choose a guide stone that hides here is one of the arcana, the helpers. Yeah, I mean, what energies you're in. In the energies of which elder arcana you are in now, how you are manifesting, how you are being read, perhaps. Well, and there we'll see, because, maybe, both in plus and in minus, but I will drag, of course, direct positions, but they will be seen already on the accompanying cards, because I still in the second pal plan to help myself because I need a neutral deck. I could, of course, take some other cartoon, like kittens lying next to each other, or, on the contrary, chitonic, but I need a relatively neutral, you know, grounded one. That's where the direct energy of the emperor has fallen in very coolly, and maybe because the author is also there, a male artist. Here you go. 
well, it seems to me that there should be some interesting tandem. That's it, pick each guide. Buckle up, let's go. One, well, I salute you. Let's watch what's happening to you. Now, I'm going to call your friends here. All right, you ready? Let's open the cards. Who's gonna make the big score today? Let's open the cards. Well, look, the Wheel of Fortune for the first option is quite an interesting story, because it can be lost in different ways, of course. Very often people, you know, like believe that the Wheel of Fortune, when the harness falls out, you know, more like a reward of some sort even. Yeah, not really. Because the Wheel of Fortune, as we understand it, it can spin, it turns out, both up and down. And the most important point at all is to stay in the golden mean. And that's exactly the meditation on the golden mean I give you in Wheel of Fortune. It's not just a meditation, as you can see by now that I've sewn in there, because it's a moment of centering. What the Wheel of Fortune is about right now, we need to center ourselves, we need to center ourselves. I'm sorry, I'm not telling you how lucky you are, because it was a very primitive story, what is happening to you now? And so even though this is the Wheel of Fortune, and this is where it's stable, I'm sure you might be stormy right now, but it's stormy for the very reason that you need to, you know, like, stay on course, yeah, level the wheel actually, because you're really churning. Is chattering because you see it's the energies of the Wheel of Fortune, yes, it's the energies of the Wheel of Fortune, and indeed you could be up and down. You could have the kind of very beautiful life that many people dream of. Maybe even someone is jealous or for example you have managed what other people have not managed their successful success. There may be some beautiful appearance, may be successful some projects, or for example their customers want to communicate exclusively with you, and then you, then, write you some cool bonuses. Yes, life is booming, it doesn't hit you over the head, and it's wonderful out there. Well, sort of. The second is to put the wheels of fortune. When we have this moment, yes, the wheel can spin, and as if, yes, who, in fact, was the hero, yes, he will become Ash. This kind of moment that everything will pass, everything will pass, and it's a moment of the transience of time. That is we can really now observe some strange events in space, being in this arcana, which is connected with old time. You know. Clearly, for the more advanced ones, I will immediately say in general how we can interact with this arcade. It's just twisting and untwisting practices because, again, it's basically like wheels, again. Who, actually, in pagan practices, it's clear that we can read it as the wheel of the year, and is actually a certain favor to you as practitioners, well, it's kind of clear from whom, yes, from the pagan pantheon of gods, because here you go, you have the wheel of the year. I mean, it's like, well, it's like a wheel of fortune. Yes, it's still about favor here, but now, for the moment, the helm needs to be aligned. Yeah, what's going on with you? But work directly in positions so as not to greatly exacerbate what is happening to you. It's like, in that muzzling kind of way, right? How do you feel about that? Good or bad? Long or short? What else we got? Long, short. But still some point. Here I want to understand if it's a reporting point or point of arrival somewhere. Let's see. Go ahead. The most interesting thing is that in terms of energy. Whoa. Well, you know, right now for myself, this Wheel of Fortune energy is very much like a personal terrible judgment. Because somewhere we may have gotten too far into matter, and time to think about the soul, for example. Well, because, actually, hermit, such a moment of solitude. There are times when we are thrown into an environment that we don't belong to, that we don't understand, and we feel like we are just some foreign, something, just an alien element. In Mendeleev's system of chemical elements, you know. That's a slim sign right there, in short, and we don't fit in yet. Yeah. Either your alcohol, you know, or hydrogen in general, or what? Some kind of, you know, story where it's like you don't belong. Well, as a spoiler, maybe you'll certainly form your own system there. Maybe number one, element number one there, but no, not yet, not yet. 
Not yet, because we are told that yes, we took a wrong turn somewhere. So it's time, of course, to hold on to the helm. If we have trust in a higher power, there you just have to climb up, you'll be taken out. But there are times when we are sorting out exactly what we really want, because we feel some betrayal, deception, tiredness, emptiness. And most likely, with these cards right here, yeah, your wheel of fortune, it's more play to the downside than the upside. Yes, it's clear what for, right, in order for there to be a middle ground. But we're told it's only fair. Someone may well have fumbled or, conversely, received a gift, because we never know the way of the Lord in the dark goddesses. Well, it doesn't matter, because I have a large number of people watching. Why is this happening? Because there is probably some God's design and God's meaning in all of this. I read to myself on weight, I'd read to you on symbolism, of course, I dried your ears for another two hours. Well, since you're lucky I don't read New Age, somehow we're getting by with little blood. Alright, come on, what's the fairness of what's happening to us there? Their lessons, their life lessons, their lessons that allow us to grow up more because the barge of swords. Hash, Michelle, well, it actually feels like maybe we're being imposed on a mission that doesn't exist, right? Or, for example, we are shown someone else's, telling us it is ours, at the body level. We feel some kind of disgust. Something. I'm saying it feels like we're being tested to see if we're on our way or not on our way. Are we ready to give up our path or not? Yeah. Because there are some other roads, but we have a separate course, it's laid out, you know. That's the kind of story that can take you by storm. All right, are you straightening out your storm drain? Not at all, I'm getting a sense of turbulence for you right now on the six draws. Yes. Turbulence. They also say that the darkest night is before the dawn. But then again, it hasn't dawned yet. Now I want to ask, in all fairness, why is this situation happening? Because it's probably the favorite starfish above the powers that be. Why are they doing this to you? Yes, definitely. Because they believe you can handle it. And probably bet on you. Bet on it. But, you know, they laugh because they say, this is something to be taken lightly, and here it's not interesting, the man is too intense, and we thought the reactions would be casual, of course. And instead of some hero story, we're hearing some internal hysteria right now. That's the kind of interesting position we had. On the first options, the gods have spoken to us. It's like the gods are communicating here. Like, we believe in you, yes, but you make your own decision. And here we go. Well, the important thing is, we have faith in you. Everything will happen for you, just the way it should. That's the story. Okay. I'm sending off the card now. All right, twos, I salute you. I hope you can see the rock coming into the frame, but I'm not sure. But I'm sure for the card itself comes into the frame because it's big, bigger than a rock. Let's look at the arcade you're in right now. Well, I need to lose my mouth because I need to lose the energy of the first one. There too some kind of momentous, momentous thing there. Like, well, let's keep it simple. The second option. Come on, I believe you. Let's keep it simple. We'll get something out. Keep it simple, don't piss me off. What are you guys wondering about? How long has this been hanging for? What? Someone's not getting enough oxygen. What's going on in the hanging? Either we are directly in the sacrifice consciously, or now we are simply being tested actively, perhaps even as if not by the Christian egregore itself, because in the hanged man, we very often have analogies with the crucifixion. Here you go. But again, that's such a story. My grandmother said. Here you go. Well, here's the hanging. That is, to look at the world from other angles, to turn this head, to pull up the platysma, respectively. You know, there are times when we move through life in a kind of stable aesthetic state. And we're kind of rigid, that's enough. Rigid, unchanging, stubborn. And psychosomatically, it's true that we can earn ourselves some inflexibility. 
but just hung it's about the fact that you need to turn your head to the right and there the head to the left, respectively. Or, for example, let him hang you by your feet, your head will bleed, and the room will fall out of your mouth, you know. You'll create something new. That's the story of the suspension. Now we're going to see, actually, what this is related to. You're hanging on. Hanging. No forward, no back. And you're hanging. Actually, someone there from the practitioners, who now understands what is happening, is able to walk between the worlds, yes, this is also kind of your option, because you are guides here, yes, one foot here, the other foot there. Dan's is good, there, Mercury, here. Well, you know, don't you? Ah, Hermes, pardon me, who's there with a wingtip on his sandals. Maybe, of course, for the physical world you are in the hanging, yes, but on the subtle plane you have already run a hundred meters, one. Let's see what your hanged man is wearing. I laughed so hard. I wrote in the comments, too. It says, I do nothing in the physical world, but on the subtle plane I do nothing. Oh my gosh, so funny, of course, sometimes these women are lovely in the comments. Well, actually, no, it doesn't work that way. Because even, well listen, any of our actions in the subtle plane, they manifest in matter, normally in my opinion they manifest, still. Something's changing. We generally change something in our world, in our universe, in ourselves, in our molecules every second. Maybe in this universe. Nothing goes away. Something. I have a slot in my head. On the second option. Circles on the water. Look, if you're really having some kind of existential crisis and you're drawn to philosophize about the way the world works, because I don't know why I'm having this song's jingle in my head. But I'm not surprised by anything anymore because I have different channels, but people don't work. Now there's something the motif is straight that makes me want to play it straight. Well, actually, actually, kind of a sad story, because maybe you're a little bit depressed, something like that, listening to something like that, because the wives are just going at it. Maybe rock, something that's, well, doped up. You know, it happens that we have to get right into the state, because that's the only way creativity is born. Well, let's see how you do. We've been hanging on long enough. We're hanging, because there's like, there's not a strong movement going on. It's there, but it's just, you know. It's not about getting out of your comfort zone. It's not about seeing. Yes. Lingering, yes, lingering. It's been a long time coming. Moderation, the Four of Wands. You know, when all this drags on, the people who, for example, were expecting some kind of performance, a miracle, something else, in moderation, they, of course, believe in you and wait for you, but they are somewhat disappointed, because everything, this miracle does not happen, it will not be born, it's all there, the right words that are waiting, they're just everything. Doesn't show up. That being said, there is an intrinsic benefit to being in the hanged man's raken, and there is, yes, by the fourth victim, because it's a comfort zone. I feel so good. I, so, in my hanged man, it's not a hermit, of course, there are slightly different energies, although they're close, yes, hanged with a hermit, there's somehow it's all, well, it's all directed inward, yes, that is, we have not. Yeah, yeah, it's called this. So it turns out that we have all these actions, movements, it's all inside now, yes. Well, from the point of view of, for example, pagan magic, it is right, because, conventionally, the dark time of the day, the dark time of the year, so it is called, when the old woman mother as if we go out, how to say it, on its reign, conventionally, yes, there is winter, the old woman mother and everything. And all the processes we conjure up, they're internal. You know. It's an internal process, it's not external, it's internal. 
and so you're basically, according to the rhythms of the year, a little bit in a state of hibernation. Here you go. And the feeling, yeah, I don't have anything going on. Nothing's happening for me. Four of Wands, Four of Cups. Moderation. Also, yes, there's a sense of grieving for some loved one here, because the lack of support from that person. From this man. In fact, it was probably habitual, yes, in your life. There is no such thing now, and so there is regret. Someone, for example, had a relationship, now they're gone, and it's a dark time of the year, and you want to create it all through memories, or there is a need and necessity for it. But hanging us doesn't give us any movement. How do you feel about it, the hanging? So I am told that you are suspending the situation yourself for you do not realize that you are in the hanging, that you do nothing, that there are no actions, because the devil is still, you know, such a cunning fellow. And now, my beautiful ones, please reflect on why am I afraid to go into the devil's energies. And I remain, in fact, hung. Well, basically, look, we are almost ready to move into the devil's energies, because we already have the cards of moderation, right? 12 and 13 arcana. Well, you know, there's a story here, in short, that we need to go into a state of, in short, moderation with some new project, some new load, something else, and we have nothing to give, you know, to the world. Or the world kind of can't give us anything new. So he says we're gonna hang on. Because, as a matter of fact, it is necessary to materialize in the devil. And we're either not ready for it or we don't want it. Let's see what we fear from the devil. I see. We penalize ourselves too much and say we're not ready. That is, we don't have the resources to fulfill our wildest desires. We don't have any. Either we don't have the money or the resources or don't touch it for New Year's Eve. So we're overriding it ourselves. Overlapping. Have we locked ourselves out of money? This is a very important point, because it's true that this kind of thing can be hung up here. For example, some amounts that are owed to us are not stuck somewhere, well, actually stuck. Who's punishing us? In fairness, are we ourselves or us? What's our story? We're on our own. We just decided on our own. We're on our own. But I want to tell you that the universe is not such a, you know, bitch and bastard to take away your last pennies and pieces of bread. So in this situation you will either be fed, and there, I don't know, or you will have some money to cover your needs. You know. It's all going to be exactly at that level, in the hanging. So it's not about the vast amount of resources, the potential, because that story is just ahead, because we're too afraid to go into the devil's energy. We don't know how to take it any further. I mean, you know, actually, if your devil energies are, in short, poor creativity, here you have a lot of ideas, but no realization. You understand. We're hanged. I love the way I read the cards so much. It's torrential narcissism, I guess. Yeah. Now I'm going to get bombarded again in the comments about. Ah, uh, okay, you don't come in, you praise yourself. All right, come on. Goodbye. Twos. I said everything I wanted to say. So, threes, I hope our faded gem hits. Here you go, your card that's been waiting its turn. I hope it is clear to see which arcana energies you are in. I have a feeling you're at the same hangout as this hanged man. I feel like all three of you were thrown into the 30th realm by all the options, but each on a different mission. Moon. Wanting, wandering around, not sure why. I'll go there, I don't know where, I'll get something I don't know what. There is no sense of purpose, no sense of faith. What else we got? The various traumatic aspects of the semi. We ourselves can get worked up, go into a state of drama, half not. We can feel sorry for ourselves, too, by the way. 
or, for example, misinterpret other people's actions, because the moon confuses you, and the moon is very often an indicator that we should go to a therapist, a good therapist, well there may be a psychotherapist, I don't remember now this whole gradation, who prescribes pills, you know, to whom to a therapy. But we really need these, tell me, helping practice, but probably helping practice with a degree. And now I'm going to explain why. Because we can go to a helping practitioner in this situation without a psychology degree. And you're somehow, quite possibly, going to be highlighted here by not or something else, but there's no clear strategy. No clear strategy. And there's a sense that that's where psychology, psychotherapy, psychiatry, that's where it's like there's a clear strategy that describes what's going on with you. You know what I mean. That's why here, if we want to get out of the moon state, we're gonna see how it plays out. We need structural guys here, you know. And this whole story with all this hiling, and, so, when you have Mary Sergeyevna just invented that there is some root cause, and, so, the mythical creator as if it all prompted her, you know, unverifiable story, you know. Unverifiable. If you trust this whole Grandma Masha thing more than your primary care physician, it's kind of up to you, of course, because it seems like a nugget. Well, you better not risk it, because Baba Masha just won't explain what's going on to you. She'll dig up regressions, you know, it'll make it a million times worse. You'll go to work through it again, you'll be stuck in the moon again. I'm going to see what's going on now, because it's pretty obvious to me. There is, of course, an expression for this arcana, but it is uncelebrated. They'll get stuck in all sorts of things. Okay, how you have this moon flowing, 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 and I don't understand anything. Yeah, I mean, it feels like I'm all blocked up. Yeah, I mean, I've got everything, I've got a barrier to the sky, a close stairway to the sky, everything, here we go. It feels like I'm in some interworld, intertemporal space. Double ball, ha. Huh? Double balls. But that said, you know, I also like this Tarkin and that he's very emotional about what's next, because what's next is the three ball. And we're afraid of the three of swords, we think it's going to happen. But Luna, it's not that it has to happen necessarily. I got myself worked up. I mean, maybe this fear isn't there. Let's say the devil is not as bad as his little man, for example. And it's like we're escalating, escalating, escalating the situation, and in fact, maybe it's not like that at all. Double of swords, king of swords. And accordingly, it is likely, as it seems to us, that we are being penalized. Or, for example, there are times when we need treatment and we don't get treatment, and the doctor ends up being a fool. Because the disease doesn't go away, we don't cure it. So we have a prescription, like a child, for example, in this series, that mom is like, nothing is helping your medication at all, and he himself walks with bare feet on a cold floor, or went and drank cold milk. That's the story. So it's like we initially take bayonets because somewhere in our moon we figured out that it's doing us harm. Maybe it's true of some particular character's interactions. You've decided somewhere in your wet fantasies that you, let's say, an ex wants to get back to you, for example. Or are you in a wet fantasy? Well I'm just going to read absolutely such an earthy interpretation yet. Or you are somehow in wet fantasies, since you don't know a little bit what happens to a person, actually, and you're making something up for yourself here. You screw it up. In fact, I don't really like these energies of the moon, because it's very schizo-like. Very similar to Shisa, but kind of like she's not there. I see what's here.
Because, look, it's true. You may be offered some schemes, yes, their interactions, but they are dubious, yes, dubious, because here the person is trying to be a leader. Accordingly, yes, you don't know the information here. You don't trust there. The moon is never trusted at all. respectively, so they said in advance, yeah, no, I'm like, I'm not comfortable with that at all. If in this situation for you now is cheating because the moon itself is, yes, so all, yes, in moderation, basically, it's constantly the same in general. It feels like, in moderation, that you've been naive for, excuse me, for generations, from generation to generation, from lifetime to lifetime, I don't know, from partner to partner, maybe. Okay. Again, let's look at what's been going on in moderation for quite some time. There's some kind of overlap, you know. Here on one hand, of course, the Six of Swords is such a painful, quite painful story, but somehow it seems to me that they are trying to steer you on a path that is favorable to someone. And it already was, in fact. Or you know, like when an ex comes back, and he's already done bad things to you, and he's now, let's say, apologizing, saying, you're the only love in my life, and you're so. It's hard to believe. I mean we don't trust, we don't trust, we're at ground zero, we're like we don't have, excuse me, there's navigators all shot down. See, the six ball is kind of like the eight ball of life. I was up most of the night chatting with the steamroller the other night. He and I were really discussing these things about layouts. He says, I really like it when you voice what you're doing, because it's clear how the picture is being painted, rather than telling the final story itself. That's a nice assumption. This time I'm telling you straight, how we have it, so that here is the Six of Swords, yes, and the Eight of Life. So if you want to read something in your own way, you're welcome to do so in the comments. But if you're going to tell me how to read, you're just going to go white. I'll coin a phrase that explains my attitude toward those who get smart off the bat in my comments. You see, this wheel of fortune here, it's quite possible you feel like it's going to lead you to something, right? Or maybe it will bring another person. We'll see. We'll see. What do the higher powers have to say about this? Why do you want this moon? Why are they doing all this? Labyrinth, these. It's such a, you know, feeling that it's not that it's not satisfying, you're permanently sitting there at all. So you've got the moon, that's your, that's your, that's your, you know, paranoia, screwing around, making up things that don't exist. That's your comfort zone, because obviously you've got, maybe it's in your nodal chart some, you know, that Scorpio that's a head to head. But I feel like you're overplaying yourself right now, you know, because your theories and conspiracies are working against you right now, you know. And you kind of agree or agree to believe all of that. Because the feeling is that all these theories and strategies, they have no basis at all. You understand, they don't have any. But you're cool about something. It feels like you like being in this state. You're already a pro. You're already, you know, blistered on your ass from sitting in the moon literally. What are you getting? What kind of resource do you have everything in there? Okay, interesting. Are you punishing everyone or something? What are you, a scary doomsday resource? Pulled it out again. Yes, I know you HTO don't get the resource. I mean, it's clear. As a third option. A lot at that. It feels like, you know, when you're sitting in the moon, it's some kind of straight treasure chest for you. Terrace, dig this one, dig this one, dig this one. Yes, then it came out, because you ran out of energy there, and then, accordingly, your life was restored there. 24 hours later, you went back into that whole game again, short, yeah, and again on the bullshit, short, that energy zeroed out. You know because you feel like you're doing something very important, 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 important. And there, you know, the game is just about sucking energy out of you, in short, and get you hooked on donations, conventionally. 
you're just going round in circles. I'm taking you to the moon. And, you know, when they say you can't win, had the six of wands, kind of chivalry, but realize really that this is you, this is such and such or this is such and such, yeah, this is your resource story for you. Because there's nothing but acceptance, well, no, well, it feels like you're judging yourself for something. That said, it's a lot deeper and nastier and rougher than I just read to you on the general layout, yeah, there you go. But it's kind of a question of until you accept it. Anyway, stop judging yourself and raping yourself and just blowing your brains out. Here you go. And this is where you just have to accept the situation, yes, as it is. What do you need to take, Igor Mikhailovich? Yeah, you guys are annoying. I don't want to bring you anything else. I realize you didn't understand anything because you're over the moon. It's like a normal story. The last one. No, you know, it feels like you've really pissed off a higher power because you've just been slapped in the face. It's not me, it's not the Pandelnik, it's the witch geners, because you're making me pull out a map on how to get out of the moon. You are shown two paths, but no clues. How to get out. Yes. It just gives you the energy to just choose to get out. And there are no clues. That's the story. These are my favorite viewers. Yeah, when you give them clear instructions. They write in the comments. Anna, and I didn't understand anything, and yet how? And why didn't you answer the direct question? Well, because if I don't answer a direct question in any of the options, I explain why I can't do it. If I cannot get through, respectively, this ten of swords, nine of swords, which you have heaped up in your head, then I leave you to your fine judgment. You know, not a table. Had cockroaches, there, and these barricades are yours. Who am I to go in there, you know? Who am I to just trash your performance art? I'm going to look at what you've awarded here from the sidelines. Be quiet, please. And you, so you awarded, and such, Anna, I didn't understand what it was that I awarded, that it was you who didn't answer me. Very funny, of course. Very funny. I realize I've been in these situations myself, too, getting caught up in it. And from the outside, of course, it looks straight nothing was explained, only water poured in, a response. She didn't take my hand, didn't walk me through it. Luna, where are we taking you? You're just storming off on your own. Listen. Well, by the way, take everyone for a walk in the first option, because it's quite possible that somehow you and the guys are wheels of fortune who need to keep the shervil. They don't know where they're going, flying or running either, yeah, and here you are this. It can. You'll be together, you'll have more fun traversing the universe together, yeah, or a full-blown plan. Just don't take this hangman with you on the second option, because Susanin will lead you on. Well, the interesting thing is that for all three options, there's no clear strategy, no clear path there anywhere. There it feels like people are strayed into traps, these traps created by the higher arcana. And just your hero's way out of it all with honor, with purpose. That's how interesting position number three was. And I was with you, your neuro witch.